Hey my dears, um, today we are going to be talking about gerunds and infinitives, yeah? But before doing that, before sharing my screen with you and to give you the explanation, I want to know if you know what is a gerund and what is an infinitive. If I say gerund, what do you imagine? Who can tell me? What is the first thing? Tell me, Samu. I don't understand. Today we are going to talk about gerunds and infinitives. Yeah, that's the name of the topic that we are going to be working with. But before beginning, I want to know if you know what is a gerund and what is an infinitive. Yeah? So, for example, if I say gerund, what is the first thing that comes to your mind, guys? Who can tell me? English? Okay. Okay, Martin said gerundios, of course, gerundios. But it's not about general things. Please don't forget to speak in English. It's not about general things or general issues. It's something else. So, gerunds, gerundios. What is that? Who can tell me? Who knows? Or what do you imagine if I say gerunds? ING. ING. Very good, Samu. Gerunds is the ING form of a verb. So, for example, dreaming, sleeping, jumping, eating, something like that. Yeah? ING form. And what about infinitives? What is that? If a gerund is the ING form, what is an infinitive? Uh, I use the to. That's it. So, infinitives... Verb without what, Lau? No, the verb in the normal way. That's it. Very good. So, is the verb in the normal way, normal form of the verb. So, for example, if you say to sleep, to jump, to dream, to eat, all of those things, yeah? So, in the case of gerunds, the form with ing in the case of infinitives is the <clears throat> normal form of the verb, yeah? Verb in its normal expression. Questions up to this point, babies? Okay, so as you don't have questions and now you know the difference between gerunds and infinitive, today we are going to talk about the uses that we can give to that in English. I know that you have seen, for example, that in some cases you can say, uh, I like listening to music. But in other cases you can say it like, um, to listen to this is really nice, something like that. So. Why in some cases you have to use gerunds and why in some cases you have to use infinitives? That's what we are going to be talking about today. Don't forget to take notes, guys, because you are going to need this for your writings, for your speakings, for your everything, so it's really important. So take it into account. Okay, so let's begin with this one. Gerunds and infinitives. Sophie, can you please help me reading this first slide? Um, in an English sentence, sometimes you need to use a gerund and sometimes you need to use an infinitive. Okay, so as I was telling you, sometimes you use gerunds, sometimes infinitive. Let's continue, Sophie. Just the first part, like the title. I know I know is a verb with ing. It works as a noun, not a verb. Okay, here we go. This is the first part. A gerund, as I was telling you, is the verb plus ing. But you have something really important and something that is special with the use of gerunds. And is that in this case, even when you have a verb with ing, this is not going to be working as a verb, but it's going to be working as a noun. Do you know what is a noun? What is this? What is a noun? Okay, no one? In Spanish, noun is sustantivo. So, what is a noun? Who can explain it to me? In Spanish, is sustantivo. ¿Qué es un sustantivo? What is a noun? Listo. Who can tell me? Listo. Who knows? Uh, 
English. English, because you are in English class. Try to do it. What is that? Give me just one idea. It's easy to, to say it. What is a noun? <laughs> Go, you can do it. Who can tell me what is a noun? Is it busy? Es que ni siquiera en español sé cómo decirlo. Ese es el problema. Please try to speak in English. No, algo que me refiero es que para que su merced sepa que... No, no one? Okay. Usually, when we have verbal tenses and sentences and all of those things, we have different parts. For example, if you are talking about the verb, the verb is usually the action that is happening. If you are talking about adjectives, what is an adjective? Adjective. Adjective. So, yeah. An, ad an adjective is used to describe your noun. Yeah? So, for example, Maria is beautiful. Beautiful is going to be your adjective. And Maria is going to be your noun. So, what is a noun? It's like the subject, very good. The subject, the name, the object that you have in your sentence, yeah? Like the one who is doing this, the, the action, the main part of the sentence. So, in this case, a gerund is not going to be used as verb, it's not going to be used as an action, but it's going to be used as a noun, as a subject, as a name, okay? Questions up to that point? No, teacher. Okay, let's continue then. We have some uses when we want to use uh, gerunds in English. These are like some rules that you need to remember to use gerunds and not other things. So let's check the first one. Samu, can you please read this first one? It can be used as an subject. Student grammar hurts my brain. Very good. So, the first use that you can give to a gerund is as a subject, as I was telling you, a noun. A studying grammar hurts my brain. Did you remember, guys, that when we were working with continuous, I told you that ing is in love with something? What is that? Is in love with what? That I told you that you can never, never, never... Uh. Put it apart. Verb to be. Very good. Usually, when you have ing, you, you have it with verb to be because they are in love. But, as in this case, this is not working as a verb but as a noun, you are not going to find verb to be. Or do you have verb to be in this first example? Did you have no, it? Teacher. No, you don't have it. No. So, that's the, like, the main point that you are going to use to recognize when it's a gerund and not a verb. If you have it in a sentence, if you have ing without verb to be, that means that it's a gerund and not a verb. Okay? So, first use, it can be used as a subject. In that case, you are going to find it at the very beginning of the sentence. Yeah? Questions about this first use? No. No? Great. Let's continue. Samu, help me with the second one, please. An object. I like sleeping. Okay, very good. An object. I like sleeping. If you realize, this is also a noun. So, it's the object of the sentence. The object is something like the complement of your sentence, in some cases. Here you have I like sleeping because the main verb is like. So, you can use two verbs like continuum, like one verb after another verb. Yeah? A sleeping is going to be the object, the complement. So don't forget, you don't have birth to be, you don't have anything else. Just this birth in the form of ing. I like sleeping. What is the meaning of this sentence? Who can tell me? Dormir. Me gusta dormir. If you use it as a noun, you can say me gusta dormir. If you use it as a verb, no lo puedes usar como verbo porque no vas a decir me gusta durmiendo. Yeah? It's the same thing that happens here. You, you are going to say... Estudiar gramática me lastima el cerebro. But you are not saying estudiando gramática. Yeah, so please keep it in mind. I like sleeping, an object. So first use subject, second use object. Let's go with the third one, Samu. Finish with this one. 
or after a presentation. I'm excited about the traveling. Not a presentation. Read again. A preposition. Sorry. A preposition. What is a preposition, guys? What is that? Preposition. No. Preposition, yeah. And what is that? I don't know. So, for example, you have prepositions of place. You can say in, on, at, under, behind. What is a preposition? Taking into account that example. Like a connector of the word, is it? Not like a connector, because a connector is something that is going to make it work between two parts of the sentence. Actually, a preposition is a word that is going to uh, be preceding a noun or a pronoun. Yeah, A noun in this case, as I am telling you, the object, the subject, something like that. And it's going to express the relation between this first part, sorry, this first part of the sentence and this second part of the sentence. So, what is the relation in this case? that traveling makes you happy, that you are exciting about traveling. That is the relation. You are happy because of something else. Or, for example, if you say, the cat is in the box, what am I saying? El gato está en la caja. El gato está en la caja. What is the relation between the cat is and the box? That you are going to imagine with that in, you are going to imagine a box and you are going to imagine a, a small cat in the box. So that is the relation. A preposition is the word that you use, maybe not like a connector, but to express the relation between this first part and this second part. So you have a lot of prepositions. You have prepositions of place, you have prepositions of time, you have prepositions about everything. So when you have prepositions, you are going to know that always, every single time, you are going to use a gerund after that. Okay? Questions up to this point? No? So, I am going to close this for a second and I am going to show you this. These are some prepositions like the most useful and most known prepositions that you have. So, as I was telling you, it's a word that shows the relationship between a noun or a pronoun and some other word or element in the rest of the sentence, yeah? To express relations, to express, to express connections. So, uh, I am going to send you guys all of the things that I am going to show you today, don't worry. Not the presentation, but for example, these kind of images, I am going to send it to you because I want you to have it clear. So, we are going to check these prepositions that we have here that are the most common. What is the, what is the meaning of abroad? What do you think? Extranjero. Very good. So, abroad, that is a preposition. What is the meaning of about? If I say sobre, when you say yeah, for example, if I say English, yeah, but for example, if you are going to use it with a gerund, you can say like the example: I'm really happy about traveling to Europe. Acerca de, yeah. So uh, we are going to check some others. Not all the list because we don't have enough time. What about a monk? What is the meaning of a monk? No idea. Monkey. Monkey? Entre. A monk. Entre. A monk. You can be monk. No, baby. A monk. Tell me. Sorry, before uh, I went away for a moment, but because my internet, like, Hey, don't worry. Your partners show me the presentation. If you want, what you can do is to send me a voice through WhatsApp, a voice clip, telling me your part, okay? Explain it to me in order to give you the grade okay. of the group, okay? And, okay, guys, we are going to stop in this case right now because the class is over. But on the second hour, we are going to continue with the explanation, okay? I am going to send you this. As soon as we finish with the explanation, I am going to send you a mail with all of these images and all of the things that you need in order to reinforce this. By now, we are going to stop. 
and we are going to continue at 9 30. Bye bye. Bye, teacher. Bye.